I thought I was going to be an industrial psychologist. And so I was going to, you know, start on my master's degree. And then I had an opportunity to get a coaching job and I needed the money. And so Louisiana Tech offered me $1,000 a month, a car and an apartment, only for a three month period. And so I went down there and I coached Louisiana Tech. But this is based on what? what why are they offering you a job? Well, they, the defensive coordinator had come up to Arkansas. We were national champions and undefeated, and so we were really good. So all these colleges would come around and, you know, visit us. And so Jim McKenzie, who was the defense coordinator at Arkansas at that time, was given kind of a clinic to these coaches. And he said, hey, I, I can explain this, but I tell you, I've got a player that can probably explain it better. He said, Jimmy, come on up to the board. And so I come, went up to the blackboard and I started explaining our defense to all these college coaches. And so Louisiana Tech, their defensive coordinator, had a heart attack. And so he wasn't gonna be able to coach that year. He was gonna coach afterwards when he recovered. So they needed somebody on a temporary basis. So they couldn't go out there and hire a coach you know, for long term. And they said, hey, we know somebody that knows this defense better than anybody. He's a, just got through playing last year. And they said, hey, you want this money to come coach for one season? I said, yeah, a thousand a month, please. I'll be there in a heartbeat. Were you a hard ass back then? Were you a, were you a... Yeah, I was a hard ass. You know, I, I, I played for a guy by the name of Buckshot Underwood. <laughs> he, he was an assistant coach for Bear Bryant at Kentucky. And, and he was a hard ass. That's, that's who coached me in high school. And so, you know, I had always been part of very demanding coaches and a very demanding family life. And so that was just part of my nature. That's why I'm always early. I mean, that's the way I've been all my life. So when you're at Louisiana Tech, this is merely a fill-in gig. Oh, yeah. Short term. I, I'm still going to be a psychologist. And when did it switch? Because it, it wasn't that long after that that now you're kind of kicking around as an assistant for a long time. I, I had fun. I enjoyed it. And um, I wanted to get better. And I worked to get better. And, and that's why I moved so many times. I had opportunities. People wanted to get, pay me more money and give me a better job. And so I kept moving until I had an opportunity to be a head coach at Oklahoma State. Was there anybody you leaned on at the time up the ladder? I mean, I was around so many great coaches, and people say, well, where did you get your coaching philosophy from? Who? And, and, and I'd like to think that, yeah, I've been able to pull something from everybody that I've ever met. Um, not only coaches, but people. Um, try to learn something from everybody. Uh, and, and I wouldn't say that any one of them, you know, really molded me into what I was. So you get the job at Oklahoma State as the head man. Right. I feel like you thought you were ready by that point. You'd been around a long time. Well, I, I was ready, but you know, I was still at a lower tier school. School. I mean, you know, Oklahoma was the school, and I'd been an assistant at University of Oklahoma with Chuck Fairbanks, and uh, Oklahoma State was a struggling, you know, you know, maybe little sister school right there in Oklahoma before Boone Pickens started putting all of his money into the school. And we did some good things. You know, we went to a couple of bowl games and I was coach of the year a couple of times and it was good. But then University of Miami says, hey, are you interested? Ah, different story. Yeah, different story and a tough, a tough spot to walk into. You know, you're there, you take over for Howard Schnellenberger who just won a national championship. Right. Welcome to Miami. That was difficult, wasn't it? Well, the difficult part was that there was a stipulation on the job. You know, it was gonna be in June and they had just had success, you know, with the national championship. And so the athletic director said, you can take this job, but you have to hire all the assistants. You can't bring your people down. And so everybody that worked for me at University of Miami really had been there and three of them had applied for the job. Oh. And so they, the three that had applied for the job were told 10 minutes before they met me, that they didn't get the job. And so I had, I, I'd never been to University of Miami before. I just knew I wanted to live in South Florida. <laughs> right. Yeah, never been there. Better than Stillwater? Didn't even go for an interview. 
I, I, you know, I talked to the president on the phone and I said, hey, I, I'll take the job. Never been there before in my life, but I wanted to live there. And so I fly down, they pick me up, I go down the, on the tarmac, they go the back way, I go into a room and, and the athletic director says, your assistants are in this room. I just told them that you're gonna be coming in as a new head coach, I'll let you have it. He didn't even go in with me. I went in. <laughs> and good luck. And right. And they were told if they didn't want to work for me, if they didn't like me, they would be paid and not have to work that year. One coach took that option. Now, the rest of them worked for me, but it was hell. I mean, they didn't know me. I didn't know them. I was the head coach. My defensive coordinator quit after we, we beat Auburn in the first game. They had Bo Jackson. Beat Florida the second game. Uh, and at halftime of the Florida game, my, the second game that I coached at Miami, I went in and I just, we were playing poorly and I just ripped into the defense. And the defensive coordinator resigned the next day. And I said, well, why are you resigning? He said, you ripped my defense. I said, I'm the head coach. <laughs> he said, yeah, but it's my defense. I said, yeah, but I'm the head coach. <laughs> and so I talked him into staying and, but he ne we were never on the same page. And we got the, in the bowl game, I coached the bowl game because we had problems with the whole staff. Without a defensive coordinator, without an offensive line coach, without a trainer, without a strength coach, uh, without a quarterback coach, they all left before the bowl game. Uh, and we struggled in the bowl game and lost the game. Uh, but then, you know, after the game, I brought them all in. I said, listen, guys, I said, I know... We've been doing it a lot of different ways, but from now on, we're doing it my way. I said, if you don't like the way I do it, if you don't like me, get the hell out of here because things are changing.